Director Ash, you know it's, it's you on the hotspot. Now here's a map that was released last week by the service announcing that the agency is pursuing a draft compatibility determination to impose new boating restrictions within the Havasu National Wildlife Refuge. Essentially, the service is seeking to prohibit water skiing, wakeboarding, and other recreational towed devices in all the purple and teal areas with the dots. Is that correct, or is that correct, Director Ash? I'm, I'm not familiar with the substance. I'll assume that it is. Uh, uh, yeah. So in total, how many miles or acres would be closed to these activities under this compatibility determination? I have no idea. Would that include all the purple dots within the 4,000 acre Topak Marsh where you are all seeking to implement the no wake speeds? I do not know. You do realize this is a man-made impoundment, do you not? I do realize that. Okay. So Les May, I mean, I've heard all these wonderful things about your, your, your uh, service, but uh, this is gonna kind of be a black eye. Last May, the service established new boating restrictions and closed motorized boating in a half mile backwater area that had been utilized by recreational enthusiasts for decades. This order was effective immediately and implemented by the acting refuge director without public comment. Shamefully, this arbitrary closure became effective two days before the Memorial Day weekend, a very important tourist weekend for Lake Havasu. Could staff bring up slide two? Do you know who this is, Mr. Mr. Ash? I do not. This is 10-year-old Ryder Bliss. Ryder is a special needs child who learned to wakeboard in the backwaters of Lake Havasu that your agency shut down last May. Ryder no longer has a safe place to wakeboard in Lake Havasu as you expect him to go out into the open waters where boats are traveling at 70 miles per hour. Slide three. This slide contains an email from acting refuge manager stating that a paddle boater's request to immediately extend the half mile no wake zone wasn't feasible and would require public comment. Slide number four. This slide contains another email from the acting refuge manager on November 26, 2014, stating she will be putting out a proposal for a 30 to 60 day public comment period. Slide five. This slide contains another email from the acting refuge manager from January 9, 2015, stating she is still working on a proposal for public comment. Slide six. This slide contains an email from acting refuge manager boss stating that this Half mile closure would likely meet resistance and require NEPA compliance. Did your agency follow NEPA before implementing the May 2015 closure? The answer is no. I don't want you to misrepresent it, so the answer is no. Your agency did not comply with NEPA prior to implementing the May 2015 restriction. Shamefully, in the draft compatibility, de compatibility determination released last week, your agency stated, due to the absence of controversy, the service utilized a NEPA categorical exclusion and did not solicit public comment prior to the May 2015 closure. There was considerable controversy, and your agency knew it. There should have been a public comment period. Furthermore, this closure was arbitrary and not warranted. In fact, on March, on March 31st conference call, your staff indicated that there had been about 12, about 12 citations since 2012 in the area. You closed last May. That's around three per year. Your staff also indicated the number could be higher, but that you all don't know because your agency and local law enforcement doesn't document the actual locations of boating citations. If you don't know how many incidents actually occurred in these areas, how are you going around arbitrarily closing these boating areas and citing safety concerns? Your staff also admitted on March 31st that you all had no data or environmental studies which documented any washouts of threatened or endangered species nests prior to making this arbitrary decision. In fact, when asked if wakes had harmed wildlife in this area, staff stated, I assume the answer is yes. Hmm, that's really scientific. No evidence actually existed prior to implementing this arbitrary closure. Your staff also indicated that your agency was holding a 30-day public comment period and public meeting on a new compatibility determination because you heard my concerns. I don't think you heard my concerns, so let's be clear. Stop arbitrarily trying to close motorized boating areas in Lake Havasu. Your shameful proposals are not based on science nor merit. Further, holding a public meeting on a Tuesday when people working from Arizona can't attend just doesn't cut it. I'm gonna to continue to keep this, this open and I've got one more last question. Director asked, last year you testified during a joint subcommittee hearing that the warm water discharges from the Big Bend power plant in Florida are, quote, having a direct and substantial impact on the manatee. That power plant is actually a warm water refuge for manatees that help them survive cold water temperatures during the winter. 
In January of this year, the Fish and Wildlife Service proposed to downlist the manatee from endangered to threatened status under the ESA. Meanwhile, the EPA is defending its clean power regulations, which will most likely shut down Big Bend and other power plants that manatees rely on. Director Ash, will you assure the committee today that the Fish and Wildlife Service will not issue any 4D rules that allow the take of manatees at warm water refugees directly or indirectly affected by the EPA's regulations? I, I'm, I'm not going to make any statement about what the Fish and Wildlife Service might do under Section 4D without, without you know, more context to that. We have no intention of publishing a 4D rule at this point in time with regard to manatee, to my knowledge. Well, given the circumstances, we would like a full synopsis based on that question um, for the record. So 